Welcome back hustlers and in today's video we're going to discuss some breaking news that's come out about Archer Aviation and that is regarding the first piloted flight. Now in the earnings call Adam told us it's going to be within the following week. We've had to wait a little bit longer but the Hustle Brothers are going to bring this test flight to you and we're going to show you what it looked like and what the pilot's view was. So I need you all just to wait around because we've got some other news that Adam has brought out today in regards to the government plans going forward with the electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles and other drones. And it's a quite an interesting piece of news. So I think we need to cover that as well. And I just want to get a bit of a catch up with the Archer fans because I've done a Joby video last week. So here we are, guys. Adam's tweet says the US has led the world in aerospace innovation over the last century. And we're going to keep it that way. Thank you to the president. And then he's added Donald Trump and the White House CTO. And that's MK Ratio 47 for paving the way for our country to maintain our global leadership in this next era of flight as air taxis and other advanced aircraft commercialize. And then just to read you what this actual tweet was about, it's unleashing American drone dominance. And then by the authority vested in me as a president by the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America, it is hereby ordered that the establishment of an electric vertical takeoff and landing pilot program, the Secretary of Transportation acting through the administration of the FAA and in coordination with the director of OSTP shall establish an eVTOL integration pilot program as an extension beyond program to accelerate the deployment of safe, lawful eVTOL operations in the United States. Now, what I'd like to ask everyone that is invested in the eVTOL space, how does this make you feel? The fact that we are getting acknowledgement from the president and from the White House, and it seems like they are willing to get this eVTOL space up and off the ground. And the pilot program is just one example. And I believe this is the first few steps we're going to get to get this up and make it an actual industry. Because at the moment, we're not. We're just still in the research and development phase. We're obviously getting the test flight, which we're going to cover later on in the video. So make sure you stick around for that. But we've seen Joby at the moment have been taken on leaps and bounds. And this is just another step along this long path that we need to get to the commercialization. So it then goes on to say, Within 90 days of the date of this order, the Secretary of Transportation, Sean Duffy, acting through the Administrator of the FAA, shall issue a public request for proposals to state, local, tribal, and territorial governments. Proposal must be submitted within 90 days of the request and include a private sector partner with demonstrated experience in the eVTOL aircraft development manufacturing operations. Within 180 days of the request, the Secretary of Transportation, acting through the administration of the FAA, shall select at least five pilot projects that plan to begin the eVTOL operations within 90 days after the date on which the agreement for a pilot project is established. The selection criteria shall include, at minimum, the use of eVTOL aircraft and technologies by a United States-based entity. Should it be your archer? Possibly. Overall representation of the economic and geographic operations and proposed models of public-private partnerships and overall representation of the operations to be conducted, including advanced air mobility, cargo transport and rural access. So it seems like the government want this to happen. And it's interesting that they've listed these last few items, which is the medical response, cargo transport and rural access. So. I know a lot of it is just intercity hops that we were expecting this to be covering, but it's obvious that they have other ideas for the EV tolls. So I imagine a few of you are just like me and you were wondering, why is this so important? So there's a few reasons why I think that this might be important for the EV toll industry. So first up will be the acceleration and innovation and deployment of the EV tolls out into the space. We're going to need pilots and they need to be trained extensively. And the program such as the eVTOL integration pilot program aims to fast track the development and deployment of the eVTOL's applications like cargo transport, medical response and urban air mobility, as we just discussed. By selecting at least five pilot projects, it provides a structured framework for testing and refining eVTOL operations, which could lead to commercial services as early as 2026, which would mean that we're back on track 
for Joby and Archer. And we could be seeing a massive push this time next year. I wouldn't also be surprised if this has something to do with the fact that both Joby and Archer seem to be trying to partner up with defence contractors. And is this a way of the government training their pilots and getting them ready so that once these uh, EV tolls are ready, that they're able to just roll them out and use their trained pilots at these government agencies. The fact that they're using the FAA to carry out this task makes me think that they are trying to understand the EV toll industry, which is good because at the moment, the FAA are dealing with a bit of a pig in a bag. They're not really sure what they're dealing with because we haven't been there before. And even though we have aviation rules for helicopters and planes, an EV toll is a completely different type of aircraft and therefore needs its own regulations. With these pilot test programs, that we're going to be able to bridge the gap between the other regulations for aviation and the EV toll regulations. And hopefully they can marry together. So guys, without any further ado, this is the video we've all been waiting for. This is actually my second time watching it because the first time I ended up recording it with my head just over the midnight, the entire video. So you would have literally had a video of the pilot and then just my head, the big Reese head was there and it blocked it the entire time. So I've had to record this one again. So if any of the enthusiasm or anything has gone out of my voice, that is the reason why. Um, but this is incredible. Uh, this is the proof of concept we were looking for. We probably had to wait a little bit longer than we were expecting. At the earnings call, I think Adam made us some promises that we were going to be getting it the week after the earnings call. And I know that there's been a lot of people creating fear, especially with the short report. The short report did create a lot of fear and uncertainty in regards to Archer, but this is, as I'm saying, is the proof of concept that we can fly. Now, this was a conventional takeoff, and I imagine further down the line, we're going to see a more EV style takeoff. But at this moment in time, I'm loving it. I think this is what we were looking for is progress. This was just a idea and like seeing is believing after all. So I'd like to hear what uh, Bag has to say at the moment. I imagine that this man, he looks 200 pounds. I say with that massive helmet on his head, that's got to be an extra 30. He might be 230. At the very worst, we're saying 200. And I don't know if it's been the five miles that Bag wants. I don't know if one of you uh, geniuses in the comments could take the length of the video, which is 5 minutes 42, with pretty much the whole time is in the air, and then the speed of knots then is 107.4. But regardless, it doesn't really matter. This is what all of us Archer enthusiasts were looking forward to, and look at it there, it's absolutely soaring in the sky. I think this is what we've all kind of got in our minds of Archer and the Midnight Aircraft. And I'd like to know everyone in the comments, would you be one of the first people to go on the midnight if you got the opportunity? For example, if you got an invitation, would you go on it? Or do you need to see a few more test flights to make sure it's safe? And it'll be very interesting to see what the art responses are in the comments because then we're gonna get a feel for how is it gonna be to get into the market and deal with people becoming familiarized with it in terms of, at the moment, because it's a new type of transportation, we might have a while to adopt and adapt in the market. So make sure you drop it down in the comments because we'd love to know. Here at the Hustle Brothers, I think me and Liam are two separate entities. So Liam's very much, he wants to see a few more flights, whereas, oh, I think I'd be ready to go on it now. Look at it there. And then you could have, you could actually be saying that you were one of the first people to fly on the midnight aircraft. I think in maybe 10, 15 years, what a brag that would be. That would be like a badge of honor. So I've skipped forward because I think the next most important part is how are we going to land? I think it's a very interesting part. Is it going to be a smooth landing? I think as the fact that they've actually released it, you know that it's not going to end up being a crash landing. And I think all of our bags would have been suffering massively if it had been. But there we go. The first piloted flight for Archer. 
And that's it. That's the first step on this massive journey. I'd like to know what all of you guys think in the comments. And for any of you Joby and Archer fans, I've got just a video for you. It's the last earnings report compared with two graphs to show who had a better Q1 2025 earnings. So that's going to be just here. And if you hit over there, I will catch you there.